I'm just grotesque. I'm huge. I'm sickening looking. I live in this constant shame. How do I fix this? Delana Boyer's story began in Greenville, Tennessee, with a childhood marked by turmoil and instability. Raised by her cousin after being kidnapped by her biological mother, Delana's early life was a series of traumatic events. Food quickly became her comfort and escape, a lifelong love affair with carbs and calories that played out like a tragic romance novel. Hello everyone! Before we jump into today's wild ride of the most nastiest people on my 600 pound life, smash that subscribe button and hit the bell so you never miss out on these jaw-dropping stories. Ready? Let's get to it. She told me that we were going to go get candy, me and my sister. And she took us in the car. She sent my sister out about a couple miles down the road and told her to walk home. And she kidnapped me. Delena's weight gain was as predictable as a reality TV script. Emotional eating became her coping mechanism in response to her chaotic upbringing. Her family life was a mess, and food was the only constant in her world. She consumed it all, from junk food to sugary drinks, like she was training for an Olympic eating contest. If emotional eating were an Olympic sport, Delena would have been a gold medalist. Brownies or cookies to solve the problems that are happening. It was a euphoria feeling. I would gain weight and then I would level out for a little while and then I would end up gaining more weight and level out for a little while. And when I finished high school, I was in roughly 18 size clothes and I stayed that size. Delena's eating habits were a spectacle. Imagine a daily diet consisting of fast food breakfasts, fried lunches and dinners that could feed a small village. Throw in snacks that could stock a convenience store and you get the picture. Her relationship with food was like a bad romance novel. Toxic, addictive, and utterly compelling to watch. Give up those sweets. Yes. I'm determined. Are you going to handle it if I'm skinnier? Yeah. You still going to love me if I'm skinnier? Yep. Make my life a whole lot easier. How? I don't want to do everything. True. Brain freeze. Why did Delena visit Doctor now? After years of failed diets and fleeting motivation, she decided to seek professional help. Enter Doctor Now Zaradin, the patron saint of tough love and no nonsense medical advice. Delana's journey to Houston, Texas to meet Doctor Now was nothing short of dramatic. Her car broke down only 50 miles into the journey, leaving her stranded on a busy highway. The camera crew had to intervene to help push Delana to safety since she couldn't exit the vehicle due to her limited mobility. Talk about an emergency situation. You're gonna have to slam the brake. Did it overheat or anything? Nope, it just stopped. Not the same problem, we just got fixed. We're but we are. Delana asked Dr. Now to help her lose weight to qualify for bariatric surgery. Starting at 646 pounds, Dr. Now advised her to follow a strict diet plan, one that didn't include the words fried or extra cheese. He emphasized the need for portion control and exercise, setting a goal for her to lose 50 pounds in two months. It was like telling a fish to live on land, but Dr. Now was determined to save her from herself. Gotcha. What do you mean? Um, and you just left that out <laughs> conveniently. We just nothing. So let's talk about what you eat all day then. I prefer yogurt. Um, the Greek yogurt, I love it. Okay, That's how much? Usually one of the little cups, because I started buying the cups because they're portions, okay. right? Progress was a word that took a vacation when it came to Delana. By her second weigh-in, she had made some progress, reaching 578 pounds. If losing weight were a race, Delana was still tying her shoelaces at the starting line. Dr. Now was not happy and set further goals, requiring her to lose an additional 55 pounds to qualify for surgery. But the, the reality is that you're not following the diet, okay? If you eat this, you're gonna lose weight. 
So you want to take the chance and move that music? That will be pointless unless you start to make the choices you need to change your life. Right. You understand that? Yes, sir. If you lose 55 pounds to cover the goal I gave you, plus five pounds, then we will move ahead with you. By her third visit, Delena managed to make more significant strides. Despite multiple setbacks, including a missed appointment due to her car breaking down, Delena persevered. She and her significant other and caretaker, James, relocated to Houston to be closer to Dr. Now, which made the process easier. This was a step in the right direction, and her resilience began to shine through. All right, so you think you can continue with this? Yes. Well, I'm proud of your progress. Thank you. And if you keep this up and lose another 40 pounds next month, you'll be ready for surgery. Okay. So I'm going to approve you for surgery, providing if you lose another 40 pounds. OK. OK. Did Delana get the surgery? Surprisingly, yes. After 10 months of dedication, Delana underwent bariatric surgery. The surgery was successful, but her weight loss journey was more of a slow crawl than a triumphant sprint. By the end of the episode, she had lost around 100 pounds, emerging with a promising trajectory to lose 20 pounds per month. It was progress, but considering where she started, it felt like a drop in a very large bucket. A year into her journey, she appeared to be thriving, sharing enjoyable moments with James and making good progress on her path to improved health. I'm overweight. They're going to do operation. It's my heart may not be able to take it. Who knows? Mistletoe here, mistletoe there for a hug and kiss before surgery. <laughs> I love you. Love you this is the next chapter of my life. This surgery is definitely the next chapter. Every day is a new beginning, but... Imagine hitting 30 and realizing you weigh 668 pounds. That's where Ashley Reyes found herself, parked on the couch in West Hills, California. Describing herself as a monster wasn't just melodrama, it was her harsh reality. The emotional weight was just as crushing as the physical, with Ashley feeling like a burden to her husband, Daniel, and her mom. Can you even imagine that level of self-loathing? It's heavy stuff. My entire body is in constant pain. I'm completely miserable. It's a struggle to just move at this weight. Do you need me to help you up? I can't do anything on my own. So my husband and I have to live with my parents and my sisters. Ashley's day started with three plates piled high with junk food that greeted her every morning. Veggies, eggs, but who needs those when you can have a mountain of grease and carbs? Her eating habits were like a horror movie for nutritionists. And let's not even start on her hygiene. Ashley's hygiene, or lack thereof, was a horror show. Bathing twice a month? Seriously, who does that? But it's a testament to how deep in the pit of despair she was. Even the simple act of bathing becomes a Herculean task when you're that big. In order to not have the rough patches on my skin, uh, my mom has to scrub me really, really hard with an abrasive sponge. So what led Ashley down this path of caloric carnage? Childhood trauma, of course. She turned to food as her emotional crutch after being abused by her uncle. This isn't just sad, it's the kind of emotional baggage that translates into physical ruin. Her marriage? Struggling, just like her waistline. It's gut-wrenching to see how deep emotional scars can manifest in such destructive ways. Because when I was 12 years old, my uncle sexually assaulted me. And I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to feel safe. So I would eat to gain back whatever little happiness I could. Food filled the void that I was feeling on the inside. And at first, I didn't say anything. 
Enter Dichter now, the no-nonsense surgeon who doesn't sugarcoat, because let's face it, Ashley's had enough sugar for a lifetime. Their first meeting was a masterclass in excuse-making from Ashley, with Dr. Now slicing through her justifications as he slices through bariatric surgery. His prescription? A 1-200 calorie diet. For Ashley, this was probably more shocking than seeing a ghost. When you're used to inhaling calories by the thousand, this advice must have felt like starvation. So why are you doing that? Because I'm hungry. I know I shouldn't eat like I do. But in everything I eat, I feel so guilty about eating it. You know, I, I know that I'm not supposed to be eating, you know, sweets or sugary things, but I crave them. And at this point, I know that I need weight loss surgery. So you already forget the solution, but uh, you need to figure out the problem. Ashley's journey was a seesaw of success and failure. First weigh in after a couple of months, she'd lost 54 pounds. Not bad, but in Dr. Now's book, that's just scratching the surface. He urged her to dig deeper and push harder, reminding her that this was life or death. Second visit, another 30 pounds down, better, but still a far cry from the miracle she needed. It's like watching someone try to plug a sinking ship with chewing gum. I think I weigh everything in ounces, make sure the portions are under control. I have more protein, and now I don't snack at all. Okay, super. Ashley has done well this month. Losing 54 pounds has demonstrated that she's able to control her eating habit. She's shown me that she's willing to work hard for this and not just trusting in the magic pill. You're doing good and you lost uh, some weight, so we're gonna approve you for weight loss surgery. Dr. Now finally gave her the green light for surgery and her relief was palpable. It was like she'd been handed a golden ticket out of her personal hell. Post-surgery, her transformation was nothing short of miraculous. She continued to shed weight, hitting a total loss of 254 pounds by the episode's end. A victory, but the battle was far from over. Maintaining that weight loss would be a marathon, not a sprint. Oh, yeah. Good job. Yeah. You're there. <laughs> I knew you could do it. <laughs> I can't even remember the last time I climbed that many stairs. It's been too long. I don't think I would have ever done this had it not been for just the push saying, why don't you try? Go forward. Boom, right? Now, give me a scowl. A mean face. <laughs> I can. Right? Liking the drama so far? Smash that thumbs up and drop your thoughts in the comments below. Stick around because Dottie Perkins' journey is about to get even more interesting and nastier. Dottie Perkins' journey on the show is one wild roller coaster of chaos, disappointment, and those mind boggling moments where you just sit back and think, Seriously? Imagine a young girl grappling with food addiction since the tender age of three. Yeah, you heard that right. By the time she was seven, she was pushing 150 pounds. By her teenage years, her weight was nearly doubled. And as if that wasn't enough, she had the added stress of caring for her severely ill son. Heartbreaking is putting it mildly. I just clean as much as I can. And I will not allow anybody to help me wipe myself or clean myself. That's just way too embarrassing to me. The idea of my husband wiping my ass literally makes me sick. Dottie's childhood was a battlefield of trauma. Constant bullying, deep loss, and abandonment shaped her early years. She courageously shared the darker episodes of her life including being abandoned by her father and surviving a horrifying encounter with a neighbor. The death of her grandmother was the icing on a very bitter cake, compounding her grief and piling trauma upon trauma. I mean, can you imagine dealing with all that and not losing your sanity? At one point, I was putting on a couple of pounds every week. And by the time I was 18, I was well over 300 pounds. And I remember just eating and eating and eating so much. And I've just never been able to stop. 
body turned to DR, now seeking a lifeline out of her predicament in a desperate bid for change. But here's where things went south. There were promises, but follow through, not so much. Her commitment to Dr. Now's diet plan was more of a fleeting dream than a concrete action. The gap between what she intended to do and what she actually did was glaringly obvious. It was like watching a train wreck in slow motion. You just couldn't look away. Pizza. Pizza. Um, pizza. Okay. Um, sometimes, Chris, I pick up burgers. Basically, you live on fast food and all that. Yes. Dottie's answer to why she gained weight is to tell me about her kids. They are her excuse to eat. Her situation at home is tough. When it came time for her final weight I in, the moment of truth was brutal. Despite her claims of progress, Dottie had shed only a few pounds, missing the mark for qualifying for gastric bypass surgery. The non-seriousness left everyone wondering if Dottie's weight loss journey would continue or come to a scorching halt. And honestly, at this point, who could blame anyone for being skeptical? I was stressed out during that time, and I've made some poor choices eating. And I'm ready to put my health forward this time. And for me, uh, I've been... Now, well, now, wait a minute. You say you're ready, but you're not. You're still blaming stress and taking care of your kids as an excuse to eat. How is that going to change long term with the surgery? Eventually, Dottie managed to drop her weight below 300 pounds, a milestone she hadn't seen since she was 18. This achievement was monumental, considering the Herculean effort it took to get there. The journey was anything but easy, especially after the heartbreaking loss of her 13-year-old son, who had been battling cerebral palsy and scoliosis. With the support of Dr. Nozaradan and her dedicated trainer, Christina, Dottie fought through the pain and grief to reach her goal. If I'm not approved, I'd be very disappointed. Okay, you lost almost 70 pounds this month. So I'm gonna set you up for weight loss surgery, okay? Yay! Okay, Yay. here's the deal though. The big test come in if you go home and start gaining weight, we're not gonna it's, put you on surgery schedule, it's okay? Not, it's not. Okay. So, Dottie has done very well. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Imagine living your life confined to a bed that doubles as your dining area and bathroom. Yep, that was Penny's world. Her poor son, Liam, around five or six, had to come to her bedside every morning to say goodbye. Seriously, this kid deserves an award for the most patient child ever. I cannot do the things that normal people take for granted, like walking to the bathroom. This is my bed, this is my bathroom, this is my dinner table. I don't feel good. I might as well be a prisoner in jail. Mmm, it's gonna be good. Food addiction has become my life. Let's rewind a bit. Penny and her husband met when she was a mere 450 pounds. Back then, they were a relatively happy couple, enjoying life together. But then, life happened. Marriage and pregnancy were the catalysts for a downward spiral that turned their lives upside down. Penny's weight shot up and their relationship took a nosedive. Her husband morphed from a partner into a full-time caregiver relying on her disability income to make ends meet. Talk about a tough situation. After she had gotten pregnant, her weight went up to, I believe it was 630. After she had Liam, she had a hard time taking the weight off. It has affected her relationship extremely. It's been many years now since we've actually slept in the same bed. <sighs> right there is our so now, here's where it gets even more cringeworthy. Penny's diet was a disaster. Imagine a shopping list that reads like a kid's birthday party. Chips, soda, candies, and ice cream. And her husband, Edgar, he played the perfect enabler, dutifully fetching all this junk food. This is where you want to scream, dude, set some boundaries. But hey, enabling is easier than confronting the harsh truth, right? 
chips, soda, cake mix, candy. It's usually junk. The list is done, but I know she likes ice cream. Ed loves Penny, but Penny is very stubborn, and Ed does enable her. He buys whatever she tells him, and if he doesn't, he's going to be in trouble. Ed definitely does bring the food in to the house. Determined to make a change, Penny decided to lose weight and go for weight loss surgery. That is a good plan in theory, but in reality, her trip to Houston to meet Dr. Now was like a fast food binge fest. By the time she rolled into Dr. Now's office, she weighed over 530 pounds. Dr. Now, ever the blunt truth teller, pointed out that while she had genuine health issues, some were, let's say, creatively exaggerated. You can almost hear him thinking, is this woman for real? Penny is very large, but to know her situation, I need to examine her and see how much she weighs. We're gonna check your weight now, okay? This is the largest fish in the market. Okay. A normal body mass index is about 20. 35 is morbidly obese. Over 40 is super morbidly obese. Dr. Now admitted Penny to the hospital and put her on a strict diet with the goal of losing 50 pounds a month, the first month in. And she managed to shed one pound, one single pound. It's almost impressive in a tragic way. Penny became the nightmare patient, refusing to do even minor exercises or sit up in bed. Dr. Now must have been thinking, is this my life now, dealing with the human embodiment of stubbornness? We're gonna keep uh, Penny under observation in a strict diet. If she loses weight in one month, uh, surgery would be an option. A little sticky is now. Being in hospital, she should easily be able to lose 25 to 50 pounds. Nothing else has been successful, so getting this surgery now, it's... After four months of this nonsense and no significant progress, Dr. Now had enough. He sent her home, probably hoping he'd never see her again. Penny's follow-up was a disaster of missed appointments and zero weight loss. A year into her so-called weight loss journey, she hadn't lost any additional weight. After a particularly emotional outburst, Penny quit the program and went home. It's like she missed the memo that the weight loss journey requires actual effort. Penny's story is a stark reminder of how crucial personal commitment is. Without a genuine desire to change, you're just wasting everyone's time. Thanks for hanging out with us. If you laughed, cried, or these stories made you feel gross, subscribe and hit the bell so you're always in the loop. Share this with your friends, because who doesn't love a good transformation story? So stupid. I gotta find out why my diet is this diet. No one told me I had to lose weight when I got here. I'm very concerned about Penny's behavior. She's not losing weight anymore. She's being given the right diet. There is no reason why she shouldn't lose more weight while she's in the hospital.